So welcome everybody to Sage 300, what's new in versions 2020.0 to 2021.1, which is coming out in a, in a matter of days and, and the future. We just hadn't done this for a little while, so we wanted to give everybody an update of what some of the new features are in Sage 300 and, and what may be coming. And uh, Renee Lemura is our presenter today. She's the Sage sales engineer for Sage 300. And she's going to be walking us through some slides and screens in Sage 300 um, from the latest release and and what's going to you know what the new features are. So Renee, I can see your screen. If you want to go ahead and start your presentation, that's great. Yes, thanks, Bob. And I'll keep an eye on the chat okay. for you. And if I think I uh, we need to, uh, if there's something you may want to answer as we go, I'll let you know. Okay, great. All right. Thanks again. So welcome everyone, good afternoon. As Will mentioned, my name is Renee Lemura and I'm going to be walking you through the new enhancements available um, in Sage 300 version 2020 as well as 2021. I'm gonna walk you through version by version and uh, we'll take you through the actual screen slides. Okay. So what's new in Sage 300 2020? Okay, so obviously this is the previous released uh, version. And why it's important to understand uh, the current versions that are currently supported is because previous versions drop off from support. So the current versions that are supported as of right now are versions 2019, 2020, and 2021. Okay, all prior versions um, are not supported by Sage anymore. And why it's important to understand what the latest and greatest is, is because the latest uh, version, which is 2021.0, uh, soon to be 2021.1, which Will had mentioned is gonna be released next week, is to ensure that all the customers, all of you guys, have the ability to take full advantage of the enhancements made to the software. So allowing for that greater efficiency and the further use of modernization of the solution within your organization. So with that being said, um, please enjoy the uh, webinar, ask questions along the way, and hopefully at the end we'll be able to answer all of them. So now let's take a look at what's new in Stage 300 2020. As you can see over here, there's multiple things that came uh, to fruition here. So we have multiple contacts, special characters, payroll time cards, further stage CRM enhancements, as well as online help. As we take a look here in multiple contacts, this here is a screenshot of uh, what the multiple contacts, or multiple companies, I apologize, looks like within the same browser. As you can see here, there's a sample company limited and a sample company Inc. Both opened within the same browser using Google Chrome, just multiple tabs. Dependent upon how many organizations Dependent upon how many entities you have within your organization, you can have all of those entities and or however you describe um, various subsidiaries within your organization, you can have all those corresponding via multiple tabs within the same browser. Keep in mind, the question that might come up is how do you know which and to ensure that you're working within the same and correct organization? Each one is color coded. So sample company Inc. for this purpose, this uh, screenshot here would be gray, sample company limited would be blue. So it's kind of like a double check to make sure you're within the same organization, okay? Um, <clears throat> you have the ability here to switch seamlessly between your financial, your operation, and administrative tasks for multiple companies, again, within the same browser. This here is allowing you to have increased uh, efficiencies as well as improved user experience because beforehand it was limited excuse me you were only able to have one company open in one browser at a given time so again just trying to further enhance that user experience the next slide here a newer feature that came out uh, based on 2020 up here you could see when this came out and this here is special characters within the web screen okay now this here we're, we're really trying to focus on is the modernization of Sage 300. Okay, so taking your classic desktop view and modernizing it into the web screen. Keeping in mind you have that accessibility to have the web screens on one monitor 
and the classic desktop screens on another monitor. It's interchangeable by directional functionality. Okay, this here, these special characters, it's come a long way in regards to we have it for Chinese, the simplified and traditional version. As you can see down here where the mouse is, these special characters have in fact been enhanced and added to the web screens. If that's something that your organization uses, especially if you have um, activity overseas. Another thing is payroll. So payroll, as you as you might be aware of, resides uh, within CH300. Okay. Now, within the module, the payroll module on the desktop version, that's the full access payroll module. What exists in the web screens today is the ability to enter employee time cards within the web screen. That is the only enhancement that has made from a payroll perspective within the web screens, and that's pretty much where it's gonna reside, just because of the confidentiality around your payroll. So we have the ability now to not only have access to a desktop version of Stage 300 in which to enter in your time, but you have the ability now to enter in your time anywhere via a web browser connected to the internet. Keep in mind there are special parameters around that to make sure and to ensure an employee is actually at a customer site when entering that time, okay? <clears throat> Another enhancement that's made, and this is continuous, uh, Sage continues to invest obviously within the Sage 300 portfolio as well as the enhancement with Sage CRM, the bi-directional flow of information from Sage 300 to CRM and vice versa. And I will show you um, after I conclude with the PowerPoint slides, show you actually some of the uh, actual screens within the web screens and Sage CRM. And you will see the exact same screens from the web browser, from the web screens in your Sage CRM. Okay, and that's really to help leverage the learning curve uh, that exists between the two. So you're not thinking of it as operating in two separate solutions, but more seamlessly operating in one solution, and you'll have access to the same to particular screens, the same data entry screens, okay? <clears throat> as we go to the next slide here, online help. So this here tends to be a pain point for a lot of folks. They, have, they don't have the ability to find the answers that they need. So what we've done in the web browser, you also have this on the desktop screen, but within the web browser, you have the ability now to find this information uh, based upon each model. So it's very, very intuitive. It's more like your go-to guide that you have the ability to look um, within each. And this is accessible 24 seven. Okay, so it's not something that you're locked out of, but it, it allows you to be able to find the answers without having to search um, and possibly never find the answers. Okay, now as we continue along, we have now further enhancements um, with product updates. So you might not be aware of, um, because this technically happens on the back end, but Stage 300 releases a brand new version once a year, and then there's two particular uh, product updates applicable to that version that exist per year, okay? And the, pro the dot one usually are released in the December timeframe, dot twos are released in the April timeframe, and then come August is when the next year release comes due. Now within the dot one release back in 2020, we developed multiple contacts uh, within the accounts receivable and accounts payable screens, and that was a long documented pain point, as well as further user interface changes. Okay, again, still continuing along that modernization flow and continuing to, to enhance the modernization. As you can see here, I will show you, but this here is what the um, screens actually used to look like from a browser standpoint, and this is what they now look like. So again, you could kind of see here, older view, more slick looking, much more uh, colorful enhanced uh, user interface. Okay, keep in mind we're accountants, so to things tend to be black and white, but we're gonna add another layer and add a little bit more of a granular flair to things, okay? Going back to the multiple contacts, the multiple contacts is very important because based upon older versions, it only allowed you to have one contact per customer, per vendor, 
Okay, that created a m many different pain points because of the flow of the organization. Okay, important forms going in and out the door, invoices going in and out the door, emails going in and out the door, and you are limited to only one contact. Okay, with the multiple contacts accessibility, and as you can see here, it's actually a separate module that ties into everything. But you now have the ability to create multiple contacts. Okay, so multiple people can receive important forms, invoices, emails. And it allows you the ability uh, per vendor and per customer to choose different email addresses for different document types that they pertain to say quotes, invoices, order confirmations. So it really helps our customers alleviate a well-documented pain point. So hopefully you see the value in adding multiple contacts across the board within your organization. Okay. That was it uh, for the dot one release. So kind of a minimal release as we continue on throughout 2020, further enhancements were made. We looked at now at the uh, bank feeds. We have here uh, general ledger integration with tax services, which is very important. Further web screen enhancements, uh, the printing of the T5018 forms, and then any additional resources that Sage has now allowed our customers to use within the solution itself. So as we move along, before we get, I'm gonna back up for one second. Let's just mention about that bank fees, okay? So think about your current processes today, especially when you come down to month end, quarter end, especially year end, when you're going through and manually going through the bank statements versus your entries within the solution, okay? It becomes a very time intensive task and technically prone to error, okay? With the bank fees capability built into Sage 300 within the solution, you have the ability now um, to match those transactions automatically from a uh, built-in feed from your bank that's going to send you an electronic statement. And you can now automatically track your bank statement entries against your journal entries within the system. Okay. So this here, with the ability of the bank feeds, it just helps automate that process. Okay. Now, Sage is currently working with the Service Fabric team to be able to deploy this within Canada in the future. So this is definitely going to uh, come due for you guys and something that's gonna be beneficial come down the line. Now let's take a look at the general ledger and tax services. Okay, this screenshot here within the United States, which is where I am based, um, when we talk about taxing authorities, we usually have state um, county taxes, some have the additional city taxes, okay? And this here is applicable amongst mostly all 50 states. Now, as it relates to you guys, it would uh, differentiate the provinces as well as, as well as any governmental taxing authorities, okay? <clears throat> what this allows you to do now, this didn't exist before, Okay, where you see here it says tax authority. This now is po being populated on every single journal entry within the system. Okay, and then it actually will populate a summary of the tax details when you click on the detail section of the journal entry. And you can actually see here the applicable taxing authorities that uh, relate to whatever journal entry you're working on as it relates to the location. Um, but then you can see the tax base as well as the tax amount, okay? And something important to note up here is um, this has here California. So it recognizes the state and then the state and county. So keep in mind, this is important too if you guys have operations with and expanded outside of Canada into the United States. This here will automatically populate the correct taxing authority, okay? now. This here also then is tracked in, and it appears in your tax tracking report, okay? So under tax services, this is in the tax tracking report. And you also have the ability to run reports um, like you potentially normally would in the general ledger. So you have either batch listing reports or posting journal reports, and that is going to incorporate the taxing authority uh, within those reports as well. Now, Will, I just wanted to turn it over to you to see if you wanted to elaborate um, a little bit more on the tax perspective uh, that uh, within this area as it relates to Canada. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. It allows us to uh, more easily report 
um, things like GST reports and and those sort of features. Um, we're really um, the consultants have uh, been rolling it out with the clients as they do the upgrades, and they've been um, showing them how the features work and and if it's going to make sense for them and, and help them with their uh, the reports. So it's it's the feedback has been very good. It, it certainly makes easier um, tracking of of those tax uh, entries uh, related to the journal entries. Or sorry, the tax amounts related to journal entries. Okay, great. Thanks, Will. Okay, so again, just mentioning, following up with just what Will had mentioned, um, the reason behind why Sage actually did this integration was obviously was requested by you guys. So it's so important um, for all the customers on the call to voice their feedback of the solution um, to DNA business management solutions, and they, they would follow that through to Sage to really help um, enhance your workflow and tax reporting perspectives from each organization. As we take a further look as to the um, user interface enhancements, so it was all done to the web screens, okay? So as I was mentioning before, company colors, that's like a double check to make sure you're actually entering all the transactions to the appropriate um, entity in which you're working in, okay? Another thing that came um, full circle here was on the order entry screen, okay? So longer comments. Beforehand, you were only able to enter in comments based on a table. So as you're entering in these comments, if you had a long comment, you would have to enter it in multiple lines within that table. We've enhanced that now to so actually have a text box, a comment text box, where you can enter in much longer comments as it relates to the order uh, in which you're entering. Another thing to note too, is specific bill of material numbers and or kitted item numbers uh, now flow on your order details. So you have the ability to have that on your order entry screen. It'll flow to your shipment screen as well as to your invoice screen. Okay, that's going to be tracked and I'll show you that entry box um, on the actual entry screen when I jump into a solution. Another thing here is this is an enhancement for you guys. So prior to this release, uh, this, this actual form here, you had to manually feed official paper in your printer to have this form populated and printed out. We, we took that uh, painful process out, again, trying to get away from manual processing and making things more efficient. And now we have the ability to actually print this form on plain paper in your printer. Okay, so it is acceptable. And a little bit more too from a product help and documentation standpoint. Again, this was even enhanced further. So beforehand, I showed you how you could, um, on another screen, the modules here, the applicable modules, and then the support behind it, all the documentation. Well, one of the things to note is, okay, how do I stay in tune and up to date with these actual releases that come out? Okay, obviously, um, I would be able to do an actual live presentation for you, but in case you wanted to go back and look uh, along with the release notes documentation, there is also now a product document um, option within the solution on the web screen that, that brings you to this applicable area. So it's broken down per year and it has all these um, particular drop down features here. So uh, again, as like a double check and I get asked all the time from customers, um, about this information, any technical documentation, user guides, as well as our business partners. Uh, sometimes that they may not have access to this or they may have misplaced things um, as the releases do happen and occur pretty frequently. Now let's take a look at 2021. Okay, this is the current version that was released back in September. It was released on September 14th. And 2021.1 is going to be released next Monday, November 30th. Okay, so now this here, the way to look at this particular feature, um, these enhancements are in three categories. We have a payments acceptance. Withholding taxes came a long way. Back in 2019, we mentioned we had the introduction of withholding taxes and accounts payable. Okay, now based on 2021, 
you can see we now have withholding taxes built in on our accounts receivable transactions. So not only accounts payable, but accounts receivable. Okay, so hopefully you really see the value here of how much is really being invested in this product to really get you all the latest and greatest features on current supported versions, okay? And really to help um, see things on the forefront versus what goes on on the back end to really get the product to be enhanced is all these little tweaks, um, especially for our development partners that this is all things you um, don't necessarily see, but when things flow properly and work properly, that's the reason behind it. Okay, and then there's also further web enhancements, and I'll mention that to you um, in a second. So let's take a look now at this pay now feature. Okay, this pay now feature is going to be, this is what's referred to as the payment acceptance. Okay, what this allows, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. What this allows you to do now is have um, invoices sent electronically, and these uh, customers and or vendors can actually pay now with a little icon, a pay now feature to click on it and actually pay the invoice. However, it has to be within the same currency as the business organization. So it's, it's not there yet where you could pay in one currency and receive it in another, where you populate it in one currency and send it and receive it in another currency. It is right now as it, as it resides, it is still in the same currency. Okay, Sage has partnered with PayPal and Stripe to bring this instant e-invoicing to the Sage 300 cloud, which is the web screen. Okay, so this is a feature here that all customers on subscription would have because you're operating it in the actual web browser. Okay, again, as I mentioned here, we have the withholding taxes in accounts receivable and accounts payable. So this here focuses um, specifically on accounts receivable and in the sales, the sales component of this. So it actually withholds the appropriate taxes on a sale to a customer and then remits that tax to the appropriate taxing authorities, okay? <clears throat> and as you can see here, what I mentioned, we introduced this back in 2019 and had accounts payable on withholding taxes. And now 2021, Two versions later, we actually now have it built in accounts receivable. So you start to see now how things are coming actually alive within the system. This here is what the screens are going to look like from an accounts receivable perspective. Um, in the transaction type, you have either sales or purchases, and then you have the taxable um, actual amount. Under the totals tab, so within the document taxes, terms, when you click on the totals tab, you actually see it calculating, and it has the less withholding taxes already um, configured in the system. Another thing to note here was expanding character limits and order entry template updates. Okay, so this here is important to note. So from um, an expanded character limit perspective, we've expanded the sizes of both the checks and the deposit numbers and we increased it from nine to 15 digits in the bank services uh, module within Sage 300, okay? And um, this year was very important because when we didn't have the 15 digits long um, deposit fields, they were the check and deposit fields were being truncated for many customers, and that was causing issues from an auditing process standpoint, okay? Based upon what payroll you're using, if you're using the payroll module within Sage 300, the version that still resides and is going to be supported in 2021 is payroll version 7.3. And this is something you may um, not know and don't worry because um, DNA does know that information, okay? As we move over here to order entry template updates, okay? So now here's the thing where you can actually specify customer account sets in your order entry template, okay? So if you entered in order entry, you pull up the entry screen, and there's no record in your accounts receivable for this actual uh, customer, because obviously it's gonna tie to your accounts receivable. It, that is okay, because it's actually gonna default to an account set based upon that entry. Okay, so it's gonna take a step further and think for you, if especially possibly maybe you've created an order, uh, a quote for a potential uh, prospect, and now you're gonna just go ahead and place that order, but you haven't gathered all the information on that customer yet. So it starts to populate 
um, kind of the historical trail for you. And then what's to come in 2021? Um, this is what's going to be released next week is the following. So we actually have uh, for the Canadian payroll, the T4 form is going to be updated for other income during COVID-19. There's going to actually be four additional boxes um, made available on that form for entry fields. And then um, for the visual process flows, now this is something to note here, visual process flows do not exist in your web stream. They exist on your classic desktop screen. And these visual process flows, there was an issue with Adobe Flash. So if you are potentially on 2020 or 2021, it may be blank. We have a support, um, not a support, we have a fix for that. So come, 2000, uh, come next week in the 2021.1 product update, the visual process flows will be in fact corrected and you have the ability now to actually edit current ones. You were not able to edit uh, previous ones, but the fix here is that you can create brand new ones and edit those going forward. I do wanna pass it back over to Will to see if he had anything else to add um, for the T4 forms, because I know that's something that's very important. All right, so um, yeah, there's there's going to be new boxes uh, added to, I think it's box 57, 58, 59, and uh, 60 maybe. Uh, it's three or four new boxes. Um, I've seen some beta releases, but I really don't want to promise anything uh, or screenshots of the beta release. But um, if anybody has any questions, let me know. What it will be is it's four boxes that relate to four different uh, timeframes of the, um, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, payouts. So if your employees had other income, uh, we're gonna implement with the tax table updates in roughly December 17th release. The, those boxes will be added. Um, we're not quite sure yet, uh, again, cause we haven't been able to test it, but Either we'll do some reporting with you to pull out the data and put it in those boxes, or the tax table update will assist with that. So we'll have more as we go. We're working through all the clients that were on um, Stage 3 under version 2017 with payroll. Um, the last ones that we're aware of are uh, being updated as we speak um, or shortly th after this week. And uh, so they'll be able to get those payroll tax table updates. If we haven't been in contact with you, I'll say, give us a ring if you're running Sage 300 version 2017 and you have payroll, because we need to get that done. Um, but I think we've covered uh, everybody or we've been in touch with them and are working through uh, getting it done in time for the end of December. The way to check that is just, of course, go up under the help and in your license information, you can see what version, um, or just give us a call and we can walk through it with you. Um, so is that uh, helpful? Everybody, any questions of that? Please just put them in the chat, and we can answer at the end. But I'll hand it back over to you, Renee. Okay, great, thanks. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to show you um, a little bit of what I was talking about in the actual solution. All right, so bear with me one second. So this here, for the folks that have not used uh, web screens. This here is what the web screens are actually gonna look like. Again, as what I mentioned, um, you are gonna have one, you can utilize both types of user interfaces at the same time and or use the web screens at your choice or the desktop screens. The important thing about this here, the web browser and the web screens is you have the accessibility to access this information anywhere, anytime on any device, okay? Again, just like the desktop screen, you have the drop down here. You can select as many companies as you have created in your Stage 300 solution. I'm going to go ahead and just click on Inc for this case. And then at the top here, you can see I'm still within Google Chrome. And I've created another tab here. And that's where I'm going to have my Stage 300 sample company limited. Okay. So just bear with me one second. And here's the landing page. So this here looks much different than the Stage 300 classic desktop screens, as the classic desktop screens do not have a landing page with all of your designated widgets, okay? These widgets here, you can have up to six widgets at any given time, um, and it's customizable. Now let's take a quick look as to 
the navigation of it, okay? Because this year has been what we've been working on internally here at Sage uh, from a development standpoint is really developing the Sage 300 web screens to come much more for much further along the journey into a modernized user interface. As I had mentioned on that one slide deck, it had looked like it was like uh, very kind of dark looking. Now you can see over here, this is here based on the modules. If you expand it out, now you can actually read the modules. And then you take it a step further and you have a different type of flow. Kind of think of the best way to think about how to access and navigate through the web streams is based on how you navigate through the internet from a personal standpoint. Okay, I'm sure you guys all know how to access absolutely everything on your device from a personal standpoint. So now think of it as how can I access company information in a much easier flow based upon what I might be used to on the desktop screen. Over here, um, this here was under settings. Oh, I thought it under help. This is what I was mentioning here about the documents. So getting started. So here, if you have questions as it relates to modules, and then you go down much, much further, it can tell you actually the, how to enter in the information. Very, very helpful. You have access to this 24 seven. Another thing that's also helpful is the product documents I was telling you about. So if you go to right here, product documents, as you can see here, we have ample years of data stored on this particular website. And the 2021 information is here. And as we have released notes and further um, updates, this is all going to be released here. Okay, so applicable by year and information. Another thing to note is if we just go on an entry screen, for example, I will show you a little bit more of an added feature under options. We now have text size. Text size meaning small, medium, large, based upon how you'd like to view it on your screen. I am in the large. If I go to small, you can see how much it's shrunk based upon how much scrolling you wish to do on a screen, okay? And the web screens are a bit more customizable in the sense of what you'd like to see actually on a screen versus what you do not wish, and it's simply a check on check box. Uh, and it just minimizes the amount of scrolling you do. You do not have that option in the desktop screen because things are pretty cut, standard cut to fit the actual device, okay? Um, now let's take a look at the multiple companies. So as you can see here, I have Sample Company Inc. And this is denoted by a green tab. If I go into, hold on one second, I just make it smaller so I can see. And if I go into Sample Company Limited, for example, this is my other entity. You could see here, this particular company is denoted by a bl bright blue bar, okay? So kind of like a double check here to make sure you're actually operating in the same, in the correct entity. Again, enhancing the multiple companies to be able to view things from uh, one browser as opposed to having to access many different types of browsers with one company at a time, okay? Another thing to note, I'll just go back into Sam Company Inc., is the payroll time cards. Again, this is the feature here that is new to the web screens, and it's going to reside only at this standpoint from a payroll perspective in the web screens. Okay. As I mentioned, it was the online help, uh, which was under help here. You have all these options here, knowledge bases, live chats that connect you actually to uh, Sage representatives to help you with any matters as opposed to calling in a support ticket. Uh, another thing to note here is, um, before I show you the Sage CRM components, but under multiple contacts, okay? So here you have the ability to add your multiple contacts as it relates to uh, your vendors and or customers. But I'm just gonna show you an accounts receivable. If we go to our customers and we click on customers, uh, we're going to look up Mr. Ronald Black. And under contact, now you also see here the notes that populate. Okay, this here is also a feature that I'm sure you all, whether you use it or not, have it because this did come out a few releases ago. But this here also is pretty handy 
in regards to, you know, if you want just a quick thing to say, hey, uh, Mr. Ronald Black, um, Ms. Renee Lamura, Mr. Will Booth, these are all the contacts here. And just to confirm, oh, okay, in the contacts here, they actually all exist. So this here is your primary contact, but you also have the ability now to add a line and add as many contacts that are associated with um, accounts receivable customers and or accounts payable vendors, okay? Uh, let me make sure here. What else do I wanna show? Okay, general ledger. As I had mentioned here, under general ledger, under your uh, journal entries, the taxing component, okay? So we are going to look up a pre-existing one. And bear with me one second. We're just going to go back to journal entry. Okay. So if I go in here and I do my journal entries, and I obviously populate the screen. Now, one thing to note, too, is I'm hoping you see the similarity here, but all the text box information is exactly the same as in the classic desktop screen. It's just obviously a little bit more of a modern look to it, but the information is exactly the same. Whether you enter in taxing information on the web screens, it will flow bi-directionally to the desktop screens and vice versa. As you can see here, you have your tax group and your tax uh, group description. As you scroll through and enter in all this information, um, you have the ability, it's going to calculate the taxing authority uh, and it will show you, sorry, it's not, I had one already set up for you guys and it, it wasn't showing me now. Um, it's okay. I'm just going to walk through, talk through. So it will show you the applicable taxing authority, and then in the totals column, it will calculate actually um, any withholdings or tax authority, as well as the applicable taxes associated with it. So all components, I know I just had um, put that all together, but that's exactly what shows on the actual screen as it flows through journal entries. Another thing to note is on the order entry screen, and you might have just seen uh, there's comments obviously throughout, but if we go to our order transactions, order entry, and we go to the total tab, and I will show you that in one second. Um, here I'm going to look up an order. And as you can see here, so taxes is what I was just mentioning. This taxing authority, it does show on the general ledger. So hopefully you start to see, okay, in order entry, I enter in this applicable information. It's going to flow to accounts receivable and ultimately to general ledger. If I go to my totals here, you see the comment box now. This here is no longer a table. It is a full text box, and you can enter in as long of a comment as you may need as it applies to the specific order uh, and or purchase order that you're actually working on at the time. And then the last thing that I would like to show you is on order details. Okay, so order details. Under here, the kit item and or bill of materials numbers. This here is now a populated field. You can enter in that specific information as you're entering in the line items as it pertains to an order and or purchase order. That will flow through your shipment order as well as your invoice order, any credit debit notes, et cetera, as it applies to those specific orders. So something very important, um, it's been um, a documented pain point in the past for many customers. So we've actually been able to get this into the uh, web browser screen. And last but not least, I would like to show you here. So I'm going to take control here. We've got a few questions I want to answer, Renee. So give me a second. I am going to um, make myself the presenter and I'm going to share this screen. And just a couple of things. Um, so one of the things uh, Renee was talking about was the T4, and I did find uh, kind of a screenshot of the, what the, they expect the new T4 to look like. So there'll be four different um, other incomes 
boxes basically to relate to the different uh, COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic uh, uh, support uh, periods. And so these boxes will be added to your T4 form. So you can have up to six uh, different uh, entries in that amount. And if you need more than that, you can just print a second page on the T4 because um, it'll show up under uh, other information on the second page. So that's what that's going to look like. Uh, as far as the Adobe Flash plugin uh, that Renee mentioned about, that uh, support is ending at the end of December um, for the Adobe Flash plugin in all browsers, and you've probably seen those messages come up um, on your browsers. So the current process flows, if you use them in Sage 300 to help you navigate through the system, um, they are not going to work after December 31st. So next week's update for 2019, 2020, and 2021 will have a fix for that, which basically converts those Flash-based process flows into HTML. Um, and so it'll convert them all over and you can continue to use what you have. If you need to create new ones, we're going to wait. We have to wait till the next product update. So if you wanted to make any changes to your, um, you were thinking about making any changes to your process flows, just make sure you do them before we run that conversion at the end of December, or early in January, could be any time like that. And uh, we'll take care of that. Just let us know. Um, if you haven't tried the web screens yet, anybody who's on a current um, subscription plan has access to them, uh, whether we've enabled them or not in your system, uh, it depends and we can uh, certainly Give us a ring and we can go through it with you and our consultant and it's fairly simple to enable it, it means turning on uh, IS if it's not ever uh, on yet and then just giving you the link it's to go to the uh, what web page you're going to set up to access them there's you can have them just internally or you can access them outside the office if you turn that on but I encourage you to try them as Renee said you can use both um, and there's some features in the web screens that uh, we have clients that are enjoying having, the, like Renee said, two screens and basically um, doing some of the heavy data entry work in the in the classic desktop, but doing some review and looking at other things or other companies in the web screens. So there is some value in that and you'll con continue to see those improve. But I think something like 96% of the, the screens on the desktop side are now in the web. And as Rene said, some of them won't be like payroll for mainly for security uh, uh, reasons at this point. And uh, but the, a lot of the rest of the features are already there and I can go through the list with you if you if you want to contact us. So if you do have any questions, um, you can contact Mike, but I'm just going to go through the, the questions we had now, Rene. And um, we've got a couple of minutes left here, so just bear with me. Um, first question was how do I get the new features in Sage 300 and I can probably answer that it depends on what version you're currently on now um, if you're where we've been doing upgrades for the last month or so on to 2021 um, and so anybody who's been gotten that update done you have access to the latest features if you're on 2020 and you're not on the latest product update it's very easy for us to do, to do that rather than do a full version upgrade and, and just contact us and we can look at where you're at, what features you're looking for and whether you have it now or whether it requires doing a version upgrade or just a product update. Um, um, somebody asked Renee, if you don't use Stripe or PayPal, can you? is there anything else supported in the pay now link? So do you want to answer that or you want me to? You can answer that, okay. but from my understanding, it resides just with Stripe and PayPal. Yeah, at this point, they are looking at adding other providers. But if you don't want to use those two for whatever reason, there are other tools that we have access to from some of the third parties um, to be able to put a pay now link uh, on your invoices and uh, potentially use if you use, you know, um, one of the other um, providers, you know, Moneris or, um, you know, various other providers just give us a call at the office and we can walk through what the options are there's also things like um customer portal uh I, you may have seen north 49 um doing some demos recently um and they'll they have a customer portal which you can embed the paypal or a pay now link in your invoice and it takes you to their portal and they will support pretty much any um if they don't already support the provider you're using 
Um, if it's one of the larger providers, they'll uh, typically uh, add that in at little or no cost. And it's a very cost effective way to let your customers see their invoices, uh, see what's been paid and pay what hasn't been paid. Uh, it's something, you know, and that's uh, relatively easy to set up and low cost. So give us a ring if you have um, a question like that. One of them was, uh, how do I use both the web screens and the classic desktop? I just kind of talked about it. If you don't have the web screens turned on, just give us a ring and you, if you'd like to try them, um, we can uh, turn them on for you. It's relatively simple. Um, or if you just don't know where to go to get them, we can walk through that. Um, and the last question was, how do I know if my payroll is supported and I'll get the tax updates in December? As I said earlier, we've uh, been working through all the clients that have set say 31217 um, because basically if you're on that version with payroll, you won't be able to use the newest tax table updates. Tax tables, you get an extra half year of support over the regular version support from Sage. So normally Sage 300 is supported on the current release plus two full releases back. So currently 2021, 2020 and 2019 are supported. You get the extra half year to get the January tax table updates in Canada if you're still running 2018. So anybody on 2018 that uh, hasn't done an update, you're okay for now. We'll have to do it in the first half of the new year before the next set of Canadian tax table updates come out in June. Um, but if you're on 2017 and we haven't been in touch with you and you use payroll, give us a ring right away and we can set it up. It's not um, a hard process for us to quote and upgrade, uh, get you an upgrade done in a couple of weeks, but the guy's times are filling up. So give us uh, a call soon. But I think we've pretty much got everybody covered or we're in process with them now. Um, so that was a list of questions. I do appreciate your time, Renee, and going through this. There's a lot of things to cover. If there is anything you have um, you have uh, not seen uh, or you want to go over, again, Mike and I can uh, can show you um, a presentation. We're going to send out the recording of this presentation after it's done. Uh, we can turn on the web screens. We can walk you through it. Just give us a ring and, and uh, at the office. The number's here and we're happy to help. So everyone, I really do appreciate your time. I uh, just wanna check one more time. Nope, no more uh, questions. So uh, with that, Renee, I wanna say thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Renee's down in, uh, in Rochester. So after today, she gets a little bit of a break um, and uh, hope everyone stays safe and you'll see uh, the next uh, Lunch and Learn in the new year um, after, uh, after the, Christmas holidays. So thank you, everyone. And thank you, Renee.